I got into acting. It was a bit of an accident because I start. I first started uh, singing uh, when I was ten uh, years old, and my dream, my passion, was music first. But um, you know, you don't usually, you know, marry your first love. You know? And uh, and music got me to acting. The first uh, TV or like kid novellas I did when I was eleven, twelve years old. Um, that that's 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 where I first kind of you know dipped my toes in acting, without knowing that I that I was going to like it or not. You know, because my thing was music, and I started in this singing reality show, and then after that, I did a couple of these um, kid novelas where I had to act for the first time, and it was kind of like you know like like if I was I I, I felt like if I was thrown into this pool into the acting pool and it was just sink or swim. And as I was trying to figure it out and it was a new thing for me, I, I was like, ah, you know, this is this is kind of cool. I, I, I really dig this. And then I, I just I just fell in love with it. Man, well, um, yeah, that was, it's, it's, it's crazy. That was, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a throwback right there. Uh, well, I moved to the States after I you know, started my career in Mexico and in Latin America. And when I moved here in the summer of 2007, it was you know, starting again from ground zero. And it was uh, auditioning and getting to know the business and the industry uh, here, because it's completely different. And, and especially back then, it was a different, I mean, it was just a different animal. It was all together. And after a couple of years of auditioning and dealing with rejection for the first time, uh, you know, PLL came along, and uh, and yeah, you know, it was it was it was one of the first uh, gigs I got here right after 90210. You know, it was it was it was, it was different times. So it was just auditioning and hustling and 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 you know, I was I was very thankful that those roles came along. You know, what was fun about the PLL was that I was, at, you know, I kind of played myself there. I, you know, I got to sing and the songs I sang were songs that I wrote. And then PLL came shortly after. Um, and I'm still friends with a lot of the girls and, you know, cast from, from, from PLL. And that was, you know, kind of, you know, where I started acting here in, in the States. So it's, uh, it's just great memories. Rock of Ages was crazy. I still, you know, Till this day, it's uh, you know, it's uh, it's crazy when I think about it because it was right after those two recurring roles, and then you know it was my first movie. I was you know uh, I was 20 years old, and uh, I mean that cast is still insane. Like I still have to pinch myself, you know, and uh, it was um, it was amazing. It was like going to, you know, it was like my MBA and like acting in a, in a sense, cause it was, you know, working with Tom Cruise and doing scenes with Paul Giamatti and with Alec Baldwin and Catherine Zeta Jones. And, you know, I was, I was starting my career in the US and getting that role as the lead was, I mean, was, was unbelievable. And I was, I, I was very nervous. You know, I was like, man, like, how is it going to be to work with Tom and to work with Alec? And it was the best summer of my life. We shot it in Miami and, you know, everyone was so nice. It was so much fun. Shooting that movie was so much fun. And it was, you know, the best learning experience ever. You know, Tom... Uh, took me under his wing. He was like, you know, this is your first movie. You're the lead of this movie. I'm going to tell you everything I wish I knew when I was your age. And and he mentored me throughout that process. Until this day, I'm extremely thankful because I learned a lot from him. You know, he would have me shadow him on set, and uh, we'd go over scenes together. And you know, it's no one does that. You know, it's, it was it was extremely generous on his behalf, and something that I'm never going to forget. And until this day. Every time I'm on, I'm on set, I, I think, okay, what would Tom do in this situation? <laughs> you know, he's he's the ultimate professional, and um, and that 
you know, that movie changed my life. You know, um, he would always say something that so true. It was like, Diego, people don't remember what you say and they don't remember what you think. They remember how you made them feel. And, and he truly embodied that. Like he made everyone, like when he would talk to anyone on set or anyone, like he just knows how to make people feel like they're the most important and special person on earth. And he's an incredible leader. And I learned a lot from him just by watching him on set. You know, how he's very humble. He loves doing what he does. He's the hardest working guy uh, on set. Um, he knows everyone's name. You know, uh, he's very thankful to, you know, be doing what he loves, you know, and he leads by example. It was not, it was, I, I, I learned more from seeing him and, you know, just um, watching him work, you know, um, by doing more than what, by what he said, you know, and um, we got to hang out a lot because we both had to learn how to play guitar from the same uh, guitar coach. So we had our jamming sessions and we would talk about movies and acting and, you know, uh, which was, which was a privilege. You know, it was, uh, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was amazing. He's someone who's very, just very special for me. You know, he's still my mentor. That music was so good. That's, those are all my favorite jams. Don't Stop Believing, uh, Waiting for a Girl Like You, um, and the mashups, you know, uh, um, jukebox hero with I love rock and roll. I mean, that whole soundtrack is amazing. Adam Andrews did a great job. And like I said, I mean, it was, it was, it was so much fun shooting that movie. I, I think it's the most fun I've had on set. Honestly, it was kind of funny how where, uh, cause we shot it all in Miami in, in Florida and where we shot the Hollywood sign, it was actually, a, like a dump, a trash dump. Cause that was the only hill in Florida. There's no hills, right? And uh, we were all like, man, this is such a crazy metaphor that of course we're shooting, you know, the Hollywood sign on top of a pile of, you know, crap. It's kind of crazy, you know, how this all works because the reason why I met with Adam Shankman for Rock of Ages was because I tested for a role in Glee. Back in, I want to say, it was like, a year or six months before uh, Rock of Ages. And he saw that tape, even though I didn't get the role, he saw the tape and I was like, I want to meet with that guy. And then I got Rock of Ages. And then years after that, uh, Ryan Murphy reached out and was like, yeah, Diego, I remember you from your test and you know, I've, I've, I've seen what you've been up to. Um, I have this idea for this, you know, comedy like satire, you know, uh, Heather, like in like in the vein of Heathers, and it was, you know, tonally I was, you know, it was it was, it was crazy. I, I I hadn't really seen anything like that before, and I wa I really wanted to work with, with Ryan. I'm, I'm a big fan of his work, and you know, we'd been trying to find something together since Glee, and when he called, I was like. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm flattered. Let's, 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 let's rock and roll. Let's, let's, let's try this. Um, which was a blast working with Jamie Lee Curtis. was amazing. I, I love her. She is, she's, she's an amazing per person and she's, uh, she's another great, you know, uh, reference to like great leaders on set, great people that I've worked with, you know, um, and I try to learn from those people as, as much as possible. It was a very fun experience. We shot in New Orleans, uh, lived there for six months, something like that. Uh, I remember when I got there, you know, I was, uh, I was <laughs> uh, you know, like the first week that I got there, I was, I was, I was trying to cook something. I'm a terrible cook, terrible cook. I was like, man, living by myself, I'm gonna make my own meal, I'm gonna, you know, be independent. And I was cutting an avocado in my in my in my hand, and I sliced my my hand open. It was it was bad. I, I I still have the scar here. It was like 16 stitches. And I went to the ER, and uh, I had a urologist stitch my hand up. And 
became super close friends with that urologist till this day. Uh, his name is Neil Baum and uh, and Linda Baum, his, his wife, and they're just the most adorable couple of people ever. Um, and I I literally spent every day at their house because I felt like I was at home. You know, a, a wonderful Jewish family, and they took me in as you know one of their kids and. <laughs> You know, it was, that was like the best part of that shoot, honestly. You know, uh, they just, they just, you know, cause it's, 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 it's tough when you're shooting uh, in, you know, other cities and you know, you're, it's kind of like the circus life, you know, and you're six months here, two months there, blah, 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 and, and you're not home. But they truly made me feel at home, you know, like I was another member of the family, you know, and that was, that was, that was, that was really great. They would give us, one script at a time. So it's not like they gave us all, I don't remember how many episodes for a season was, uh, but you know, they would release a script every week. And it was almost like, it was almost like the bachelor seeing like who, like, like, you know, like who's going to die in like the next episode or who's going to be the red devil. I was, I was pretty stoked that I was the red devil. So I wanted to be uh, a villain in that. Uh, but yeah, that was that was nerve wracking, and I'd never worked on a show like that. Where it was like, you know, like musical chairs. You know, one one is gonna go. Who's it gonna be? Uh, complete. Ryan would not say a word to anyone. So that was definitely nerve wracking. See, I always thought it was gonna be Chanel, Emma. Yeah, but then it would be like, no, maybe you know, it was you know, it was crazy. We had no idea. Truly, it was right after Luis Miguel's first season, and I wanted to do something that was uh, totally different to to Luis Miguel. And uh, and I'm a big Tim Miller fan. I thought you know his work with Deadpool was amazing, and and it was right after the show, you know. So that was that was that was really exciting. It was right after Luis Miguel, which was great. And, you know, working with David Ellison at Skydance and Paramount and Arnold and everyone, you know, it was, it was part of a great team. And I liked how at the very beginning, like it kind of played with who's the Terminator after, you know, and then after my death, that's what, you know, starts the whole journey and the whole adventure. And it was, it was fun. We shot it in Spain. We shot it in Budapest. Um, it was, it was, it was a fun time. And that's why I was so excited about it because Tim, when we when we met, he was like, "Listen, it's not a huge role, but it's the catalyst to, you know, the whole movie, and um, and I and I want you to do it with me, and I want you to you know to, to be a part of the team." And I was I was very flattered, and I don't care how big or small the parts are, as long as it's with the right project and the right people, you know, uh, that's all I care about. And uh, I was I was really excited to to join that that Terminator team. I was a fan of his music. I would I would listen to his songs. I've been to multiple concerts. Um, my parents were also big fans. So I think his shows was was probably it was, was one of the first shows I ever watched. Um, I was kind of familiar with his story, but uh, you know just because. I know people in common that worked with him just through life, you know, and um, and I just I was always kind of fascinated with what I knew, you know, and uh, not a lot of people, um, you know, there's, there's so much mystery around it, and he's always been someone who's been. You know, uh, very, very, very private about it, and I, I, I was always kind of fascinated with how little he would talk about, you know, or, or anything. Like he would rarely do interviews, and everyone would always be talking about it. From from a marketing standpoint, I was like, you know, I was I was, I was always blown away by that. And always a big fan of his of his music and his and his voice, and uh, and I always thought that his story would make for an amazing 
you know, TV show or a movie because that, you know, contrasts of him being so big, you know, the biggest Latin artist, but, you know, having that tragic childhood and life, such a crazy contrast that very few people knew about. Um, so when they, when, when, when Mark Burnett and, and Roma, uh, Downey, you know, called me up in 2017, right after we had worked on a show called the dub keepers, um, or not right after it was years after that. But I, you know, I, I Mark and Roma and I had, had become close friends and I told him how I, I really wanted to get into producing and, 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 and learn and like develop my own projects as well. And especially seeing, you know, I, I saw that with, with, with Tom Cruise when we worked together, you know, he was every night he was working, doing, you know, post on the movie he just shot, working on the movie he was doing currently and doing pre on the movie he was going to do next. I was always blown away by that. And that was always my dream. So, um, so when they approached me and said, listen, Diego, we want to do this. Like we're, we're doing this. We have his life rights. Um, we're doing it, you know, and we want you to play him. There's no script. Uh, it's, this is, you know, this is very new. We, you know, we barely got his, 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 his life rights, but you know what? Let's have this be the project that we produce together. And that was, you know, I was, I was, I was honored by that. You know, I was, uh, really, really excited about it. Cause I, you know, I, I knew a lot about his life already through people, um, you know, from be, being friends with people that, that, that worked with him or, you know, like, you know, the guy who discovered me singing when I was 10 years old, his older brother managed Luis Miguel, just like from crazy life coincidences, you know? And, um, and I really wanted to make this just a, a great quality, TV show in Spanish, you know, not in a novella format, but in an American TV format, you know, fewer episodes, quality versus quantity, you know, the way it was directed and stuff and being a part of that process from the very beginning from, you know, uh, in the writer's room and seeing the outline and the Bibles and the drafts and then being, you know, giving notes and, and being, being, being a part of that team alongside with Gato Grande and MGM and Pablo Cruz and everyone involved was an amazing learning experience. Cause I was, you know, there from the very beginning, there was no other actors there. There was not a director attached. So um, we we built it together and, and being being a part of that team was, was amazing, especially when I really wanted to get into producing. So it was a very, it was, it was, it was an amazing, amazing learning experience. No, no one expected it to have the, the success that season one had. We all knew it was a big risk. You know, he's still alive. You know, uh, he's very relevant. Um, I was singing his songs as well. You know, it was, it, was, it was a risky move. You know, most of these biopics happen once the artist has already passed. If I'm doing this, I'm diving deep. I'm not gonna imitate, like, it's not an imitation, you know, it's, 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 it's becoming this character. And it was the first time, you know, I had to, you know, it was a transformative role where I had to become someone else, you know, someone else who's alive, who's relevant, you can YouTube and listen to his voice and see if they're singing his songs and all that stuff. So, you know, I knew that the prep was going to be the most important part. Also something that I learned from Tom, you know, he, the amount of prep he puts into all his stunts and work, I mean, from seeing, you know, he had to learn how to sing and learn how to play guitar and he was doing that for months. So I was like, I'm, I'm going to take the same approach. I'm taking a year off and I'm just going to prep for losing the off and I'm try to, you know, learn how to sing like him and get as close as I can to sounding like him, you know, it was crazy because, you know, he's one of the best voices who's ever lived, said by Frank Sinatra, you know, and and uh, really being involved with the producing side of things. And like, that was my life, you know? Um, and after that, seeing this, the success that the show had, which 
I had no expectations going in. All I, my goal was I want to go to sleep every night knowing I did my absolute all. There's nothing else I could have done to prep. There's nothing like I, I, you know, that was, that was my goal, you know? So I went to Spain to prep, you know, acting with Juan Carlos Coraza, who's an amazing acting coach, who's uh, Javier Bardem's acting coach, and Penelope Cruz's acting coach. He's, you know, he's an amazing acting coach. So that was that with acting and then producing the show and learning how to produce and being a part of the team. And then singing as well it was a role that demanded on every single angle, acting, singing, producing, transforming, becoming, you know, losing weight. Then for season two, gaining weight, season three, gaining more weight. You know, it was, it was everything. It, it, it just absorbed every, like, just in every angle. It, 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 was, it, was, it was a very demanding project, but it was also, you know, the satisfaction from doing that is I've, I've, I've never been happier in my life, you know, cause it was truly building something. And then from there on out, you know, that's what kind of, or not, not kind of, that's what launched Three Amigos, which is my production company um, today. And, uh, and after that, you know, um, Nuevo Orden came around with Michelle Franco, which, you know, is an amazing Mexican director. We won the Venice Film Festival or the jury prize with that. And that was the first movie that I produced, the first movie I'd, first Mexican movie I'd acted in, being Mexican, which is weird. It was kind of like a reverse crossover. I went to the States to then, you know, and now that's, that's, that's my main focus right now. It's, you know, and it's, 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 it's truly a dream come true. The show changed my life um, and, you know, launched my producing career and now it's, you know, it's uh, it's it's not just acting, but it's also the projects that we're working on together. And Three Amigos, uh, my sister is in it with me, uh, Natalia, who's uh, it's it's great to be to be working with her. You know, she went to Duke, she went to J.P. Morgan. She's smart as a whip, and um, and she's been around the business her whole life. Never wanted to be in front of the camera. Uh, and then my you know manager and best friend partner in crime who, you know, we've been working together ever since he got, you know, his first job in the business, you know, as, as an assistant, Josh Glick. And, uh, and it feels, you know, like a dream come true, you know, being able to have a production company and make projects with your best friends and your family. It's, you know, it's, it's like, it doesn't get any better than that.